<laughs> right. Okay, so hi everyone. We are now live. Hi Howard, how are you doing? Great. Lovely to hear. As as usual, it's a, it's always a pleasure to see your uh, presentation and the amount of time and energy you put into it. Uh, slightly sorry about the shoppiness of the broadcast. Do not worry. The talk will be in its full uh, 30 FPS quality on the website after the conference. Actually, right now. It's available right now. Um, as usual, uh, feel free to ask you questions in the, in the pad. We've linked it both on the talk page and on IRC. Uh, I think... I am on the right one, right? This is a uh, solo. Nice. Yes. Questions. What are they? Oh, we do have questions. It's just that they're not in the right uh, part. OK, so I'm going to start. I'm going to read the questions to Howard, and Howard will be answering them. And if you are interested in asking questions directly to Howard, I see a lot of people have joined us on BBB. So we'll first go through the questions on the pad, and then we'll move on to the people on BBB. So Howard, starting with the first question, uh, does stable data allow for recursion? e.g. the result that returns they are random monster haunting the cavern entrance and we roll on random monster and inject them inject into the result sorry a little bit of a complicated question do you want me to read it again perhaps uh, yeah i think so <laughs> i didn't quite catch that <laughs> Okay, so does the table data allow for recursion? So I think. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it it, it does. Uh, I put a little, you know, there's some code that could you so you could, uh, yeah, you get a random value that gets inserted, and that random value could refer to another table, and it can keep on going. I have not pushed that that hard because uh, obviously it's uh, it might be a little on the heavyweight side. I can't imagine it to go too deep though. Uh, I'm pretty sure Emacs would be complaining if you go a little too deep. You know, we have sure. the thing as max uh, list recursion or stuff like this. So don't worry. Go willy nilly with, with your recursions. Um, we've got comments about the fact that it's a really cool project, and I feel like everyone watching would be agreeing. Um, you've got a question about where you can get this. Uh, do you have a GitHub repository with all of this? Yeah, and at the, well, at the end of the presentation, I kind of display that. And I think I put it at the top of the uh, the pad. Um, Nothing there. Oh, yes, I have one. There we go. Yeah, there's. Sorry. Go on, please. There's, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be um, kind of reformatted. This is all alpha code, so obviously uh, um, it's a personal hack. So. People should just steal the code as opposed to looking at a uh, a real project to use. Right, lovely. Uh, so this game plus CRDT should be a great should be great for non solo plays. Uh, are you familiar with CRDT? Well, um, so I used to use Flubits once upon a time, and um, after seeing the previous talk on CRDT, it's like, oh, I like that, and yes, I think that'd be a fun idea. I think I remember. So I, I did something much more humble than you did. I did a little bit, uh, a little package in, in org mode for rolling dice. And you had like a little formula, like you could write 6d20, and it would throw six uh, dice with 20 faces. 60, sorry, six die, French uh, Frenchman here in a room. Yeah, yeah, six yeah. Die, uh, with 20 faces, and it would average them out or provide you yeah, any yeah. kind of stats. Needed. And this type of stuff works really well over CRDT because it's one edit inside of a file. If you okay. start making edits in different parts of your file, uh, it starts becoming a little more complicated because CRDT mm. struggles when you're making many discrete changes inside of the same file. Does that make sense? Uh, it does. It does. Oh, interesting. OK, yeah. No, I have not played with it yet. Well, feel free to play with it, and if you've got any kind of, uh, if it works, it works and it's amazing, but if it doesn't, feel free to send us messages because uh, Shantan, who's the maintainer of CRDT, we've been looking into options to make it a little more resilient and work elsewhere for okay. um, securely. Excellent. All right, Excellent. Back to, I'm, great. I'm going back to the previous question. So does the current version also have some utilities for doing multiplayer? like either physically or digitally, like we've done with CRDT. And the question is, because you mentioned you previously did multiplayer session as well. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I was using the 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 table, you know, the random table edit, um, random entry kind of thing. I was using that uh, at my table. So, you know, I'm a, an eternal DM. So I would always use that. To, like somebody says, so what's the name of that shopkeep? And I could just uh, hit a key and it'd come up with the name and I'd just, you know, read it off. So, but it was still me generating it. Uh, so it wasn't something that people would see necessarily, but I would keep notes in it and then publish those notes. Um, but yes, I don't know. This sounds all kind of, uh, this sounds all intriguing. I think this would be fun. I think I need to get a group of uh, like-minded uh, Emacs people who want to uh, play online. <laughs> I'm sure you've got plenty of people not only watching, but also here in BBB. So uh, we only have about 14 minutes until we go to the next talk. So that might be a little short for a campaign, but we might just... Uh, sure, have a little yes. Bit. Uh, moving on to the next question. How does one become super awesome like Howard Abrams? And I very oh, much agree. Kind, too good. kind, too kind. That's always your secret. You're not giving your trade secrets. How to be awesome? <laughs> <like you. laughs> there's, there's no trade secrets. Just follow your passions. <laughs> I can only concur. All right, moving on to the next question. Uh, please talk a little about how you produce such a slick presentation video. Everything looked completely professional, and I'd agree. So tell us more. Uh, OK, so um, as you've seen my previous presentations, it's all just Emacs screen. I just felt like, oh, what I really want to talk about is how much fun I'm having and the little introduction. So my my son actually is a um, is a YouTuber. So I asked him and it's like, oh, I'll take care of you, dad. And so he's the one that kind of uh, prompted me. So I had a director. Um, don't know if that translates, though, but uh, I mean, that translates amazingly. I mean, the results at the end is the result is very good. It, uh, you know, very um, over the top, over the top. I've never done something like this before. No, but it fits you so well. I think this over the top mess combined with the editing, it just. Uh, I might have to keep doing it because uh, it was yes. fun. It was fun to do. You've set a standard that you'll need to meet for following uh, Emacs oh, presentation. No. So make sure All right, I'll have to fun. keep. I'll have to keep paying them then. Yes. All right. Moving on to the next question. Does table data? Uh, no, sorry, that's the one we did on recursion, and we're not going to struggle through the reading of it again. <laughs> All right. So with your toolkit, a list of good books would be nice to be included. Example: D and D, space, steampunk, cyber, cyberpunk settings. Do you have such a plan? Oh, oh. Uh, I mean, I could definitely publish a, a bibliography of you know things I'm using and and reading um but i don't know if i'd be writing anything oh come on don't tell yourself short you've already proven you were amazing in very different very very topics i'm sure you should give it one more try <laughs> i don't know i've got a sabbatical coming up i'm toying with writing something but i don't know if it'd ever leave the emacs buffer <laughs> all right <laughs> i like this uh, next question. Hi, Howard, and thanks for an outstanding presentation. What did you use to create the graphics in your presentation? Didn't we? Did we cover uh, this one already? I can't remember. No, that was well, okay. So the, the 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 graphics actually were uh, <laughs> they they were just kind of hacked together. But then I just gave them to my son, and it's like, can you put the graphic right here? And he goes, no problem. There it is. Like perfect. OK, great. So one more, one more reason to keep paying your son. And yeah, paying... yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you can get, uh, get yourself a YouTuber who knows uh, how to use uh, all the tools, I, I think he was using DaVinci, but I don't, you know, he's got quite a few going. Right. All right, moving on to the next question. Any plans to borrow tables from Dungeon World or Iron Sword Starforge and publish, uh, publish in a TK repository? Not sure what TK oh. is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so the um, that would be fun, and I I'd love that. And I I was just reading uh, a way to render PDFs uh, that you might own into uh, Markdown format, and if it's in Markdown, it'd be easy to pull into Org mode. Um, so all of the Iron Sworn that role playing game. Um, 
since it's all under the creative license, I think I think even the Starforge is. So I think I could grab the the Starforge one. I don't know about Dungeon World um, and their tables, but yeah, a lot of people are starting to publish those kind of tables. So uh, yeah, that'd be fun. I'd like to render all those in ta in text files that I could pull up like that. Lovely. Um, I think that's all for the questions we had uh, in the pad. We still have nine minutes, and I see plenty of people have joined us, including one person with a microphone on BBB. Uh, Plasma Strike, do you have a question, and would you like to mute yourself and ask it? I'm also going to check the chat. In, in oh, yeah. Stars Without Number is another great one that's got some great tables in it. Not Sorry, I'm just looking at the questions that are popping up here, too. Sure. Uh, so I don't see anyone unmuting themselves. I see people typing away questions. By the way, if you're going to type questions, perhaps do not put them on BBB, put them in a pad. It's a little easier for us to archive them afterwards. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of time. I'd, I'd, I'd feel bad about going on break when I have a you uh, available and ready to answer more questions. Oh, you're too kind. How have you, has this changed how oh, your visualization of the books or of your games at all? Uh, sorry, can you ask that one more time? I didn't catch the first part. How has this impacted like your imagination on the scenes and stuff like that? Because it's partly open and uh, closed because you, you had that chart where you had that, where you put it in the center of constrained by algorithms to enhance your creativity, you write it, but it's not all freeform to where you have writer's block as, as much. You, you, hit the, you, you hit it on the head. That's exactly it. That's why I've been doing this is, um, you know, creativity is a hard thing to foster and having little prompts that you have to kind of work together, like, um, you know, twisty language. What, do, what does that mean? Oh, I have, to, you know, you have to kind of work with that. So yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why I got into doing this solo version of it. Um, just because you kind of, it does really foster the creativity. Did that answer I mean, the question? Yeah, well, has it, kind of. Has it improved over time, though, of using it? Like, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I w I would definitely say so. Uh, while I'm still not ready to publish my files at all, but uh, the first ones were much worse. <laughs> As an example, like if after you played for like two months or something like that, like could you close your eyes and see the rooms a lot better versus? Yeah, I or, think so. I think so, and you know, um, th there's uh, there's one solo game called uh, Thousand Year Old Vampire. I don't know if you've seen that one or not, but um, it's it's quite creative. It's very interesting. It's got it's got a great setup to to use, and you know, when I kind of was looking through it it's like oh, i'm thinking of a typical vampire and this sort of thing um but then uh there's this uh youtuber named uh seth skalkarski if i can pronounce his name right uh he was describing it and he came up with a completely different vampire scene and it's like oh i could see how people can kind of start working on these things and really see things differently and the creativity and all that sort of stuff just really blossoms and then I guess as an extension of that is like, how has the stories changed after using this toolkit or this solo games for like two months? Like the scenes, like how you, like the stories that you'd start generating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, a lot depends on just how much you're willing to put into it. But yeah, I've I've definitely had a lot of fun and it's just, just been a lot more enjoyable and just more interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, like has the types and quality of the stories changed a lot or more? I, the think, I think so, you know, but obviously uh, the proof is if somebody else is, um, <laughs> is doing the evaluation and I'm not letting that out, but I think so, but I think so. So, I so, but I think your mileage may vary. So, yeah, try it out. 
have you seen the game Dwarf Fortress? Because it's yeah. supposed to be a video game that's in a similar spirit to that, where it helps you generate stories. Dwarf Fortress, Rim World, uh, Kenshi mm-hmm. is another one. Yeah, no, I, I, I've looked at the Dwarf Fortress, but I haven't played it. But uh, uh, that one seems a little bit more structured, but still could be a lot of fun too. And then others, it's like, how far do you want to take it? Like, um, like I just picked up this one called Broken Cask. There it is, uh, where you generate a little uh, bar uh, tavern, and then you start ro- uh, rolling events. Now, it's it gives a lot more stuff coming out of, you know, it's like, oh, this person's showing up, and this is what's happening, but you can elaborate on it as much as you want. And that's what I'm thinking I might do. Hi, Mike, you got a question? Hi, Howard. Uh, yeah, I do have a question. I'm a big fan of your work on literate DevOps and your essay and video on that topic. I'm just wondering oh, if you if you still use that workflow at work, and have you changed how your how that process works, or has it evolved over time since that video and essay were written? Um, that's that's a good question. Yes, I still do it. Um, it varies depending on the project and whatnot. Uh, but I still am using it. And, um, yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I, in fact, I'm doing it with a lot of other things. Like uh, all my configuration files are all in um, a literate style for Emacs. Um, and even all the code that's in Ironsworn, the repo, if you go to the repo, it's the readme file. And yeah, that's just being rendered out to the Emacs file. So it is still all literate. Very cool. Yeah, because I don't know, some things are just a little too complicated to just type up. All right. Um, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but we have only about three more minutes of lifetime. By the way, feel free to stay and discuss any of the topic uh, of today's discussion um, after we go off there, and we'll be able to keep all of the dis- nice discussion and put them on the talks page afterwards. That was great. Uh, Right. Uh, Howard, uh, I would like to ask you if you have any uh, last word with regards to your presentation or the questions you've had. We've also, had, well, the last question we had, actually, we had Mike come and ask it live. But do you have any parting words before we leave you? Okay. My, <laughs> I think the last thing is uh, go and hack something. I mean, this Lisp stuff is a lot of fun, and I hope that came across. You know, it's like the project I made is just a personal thing, and it was fun for me to make, but everybody's probably got some fun thing they could make as well. And just, I don't know, hack it yourself, because all the, you know, think about uh, adding multi-threading to Emacs. Maybe we don't want that, because that'll just complicate things. This is your own personal hacking sandbox, so go have fun. <laughs> Great. I was just going to say we were talking about Dwarf Fortress. In Dwarf Fortress, there is uh, it's a very CPU-intensive game, because it needs to compute every single thing in the world. And there's such a thing as the CPU death of the world, where basically uh, you've got too many cats that are just breeding constantly with one another, and it creates so many entities that it just crashes, and the time the, the time it takes for the day to finish it, it just never finish. So I was going to say maybe multi-threading might be useful in this case for Emacs. So I wanted to foray into yeah. the future. All right, All sounds right. great. Thank you. And thank you so much, Howard. And thank you, Plasma Strike, for your question, as well as Mike, who joined us. Uh, we're going to go live with the next talk in about one minute. And until then, well, I'm not going to put music. You can wait 50 seconds with music, you Zoomers. All right, we'll be back in a bit. Bye, Howard. Bye-bye. All right, we are off here. Thank you so much, Howard. I need to dash and, oh, I think he's already gone. So bye, everyone. I'll see you later. <laughs>